yards for that third period. That third quarter is going to be amazing. For Southern Cal, they're going to turn around and say, wow. Five wide out shotgun for Mike McCoy on the first play of the fourth quarter. There's an audible on the line. Holland chases. And McCoy. Oh, he lost. Oh, he may have gotten he, the first down. He almost lost the ball in diving for the first <laughs> down, but he did get it. Man, did 19 you? yards. What a play by McCoy. He comes out here. It's almost like he has seized the marker that he's got to make. He's not going to go out of bounds. He's going to dive for the marker. And he makes it. Again, rolled to the outside, nobody's open. Now he may glance at that flag on the side to see that he's got to make a couple more yards. Get out of my way, I'm diving for this first down. Not known as a runner, but a terrific scramble by Mike McCoy. And the use in the Trojan territory. The pitch to Anderson, and he has met hard, maybe for a loss by Mike Salmon, the strong safety. After three quarters, that huge sad gap has been closed considerably. Still 335 total yards for the Trojans, but now 270 for Utah. Almost all of them in that third quarter. And they've run just six fewer plays than the Trojans now. Momentum has changed. Now Southern Cal needs to take that deep breath and say, hey, we're going to play Trojan football. We're not going to sit on this lead. Anderson lost one. Hooks for a short gain to the 38. The off to use backup wide out who caught 41 balls, four for touchdowns during the regular season. He was hit after a pickup of five. It'll be third down and six. You get the feeling, Dan, that this is going to be four down situation in this yardage situation. They're not, they're going to go for it. If they don't pick it up on third down, they'll go for it on fourth down. Two tries to get to the Trojan 31. Blitz coming up here. Picked it up, but it's going to be overthrown. McCoy at least made sure that if it wasn't going to be complete, it also wasn't going to be intercepted. And they send the punting unit on. That's interesting. But they picked up the blitz pretty well. Watch the middle. You see the big backers coming in there? You're going to see a safety come in too. Look at that. There's a safety coming from the outside. But when you're running a 12 to 15 yard pattern, you just don't have time to look downfield. Now let's see what kind of job he can do to nail him inside the 20. This is a little bit surprising. 35, 36 yard line when you're behind, a lot of times that's four down territory and you just go for it. High snap. Jones did a beautiful job bringing in the snap, but did not pin the Trojans deep. 12.55 to play. 28-13. Nine possessions since 13 and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Nothing doing here. Walters hit by Mark Rexford, who helped stem the tide in that first half with an interception. The return, which they didn't quite cash in. That, that looms huge right now. Two plays really stand out in my mind. Of course, that's the one fumble when they got the personal foul on it, which sent them back out of field position. And then that third down and about six inches when they went wide, got, got thrown for about two, three-yard loss, and then passed incomplete on fourth down. Struther with a flag down. Hurdles to the 27. USC, very inconsistent running team this year, and that's for attention. You'd like to be able to run it and sit on the lead. They really just have not been able to rack up the five, six, seven yard pickups on a consistent basis. Well, this is going to be a holding call, but really, the thing that's really hurt USC this year has been so many injuries in their offensive line. You remember Vaselli missed for five games with dislocated kneecap. Crispin's been hurt. I think Burrito's been hurt. They've had some injuries in that front line. And I think that's given them that inconsistency up front. Ninth penalty tonight against the Trojans for 81 yards and losses. And if I'm Rob Johnson, I'm going to find Johnny Morton. I'm going to find.
find him right now. They haven't been able to cover him one on one. Let him run one of those crossing patterns he's been so good on. Well, he looks at Struther, who is ankle tackled at the 15 yard line by Blaine Berger. See, I, if I'm a defense, I'm going to give you that little pass out into the flat pattern because I'm going to react to it. If you pick up five, six yards, it's not going to hurt me. Again, you see Struther on the left side of your screen, dump it out to him. Good reaction to him. Good tackle here. Hang on. Some of your best tackles are when you hang on by that foot, that shoe. Idaho Falls product. Playing his last game. Third and 14. Johnson caught by Tyler Cashman. And a much needed big game of 23 yards for the backup H back from Los Alamitos. Crawford on the tackle. This is a good timing pattern. They didn't get pressure on Johnson. He, you could stand back there. You see the curl right into the middle. Good strike there by Johnson. That's what they needed going downfield. They had Morton on the other side if they wanted him. But Cashman comes up with a big one. His father, Pat Cashman, one of the legendary plays in USC football history, returned an interception 55 yards for a touchdown and the win 67 over UCLA, 21 to 20 to clinch the national title that year. Short catch by Ken Grace. I love that he said, he said, do you know how many times I've heard that story about my dad? He said he brings it up every year. With very little product. <laughs> Somewhat surprising. 182 of the first 128 since then. And their ability to take Morton away in the second half. Very much a cause. Second and one. Struthered. Hit by Woods and then driven hard back by Carroll Plus, but he'll have the first down to the 49 in Utah. Well, you know, you start looking at some of these players, and you say, what ones can make it in the pros? And Struthers is one of those backs that can make it. He's got great hands. He exercised that time showing you, catching that low ball out the flat. That's a tough catch because you're trying to catch it, plus you're trying to get up upfield to get the yardage. John Robinson said he feels that he's got a real future. He said he's not going to dazzle you with his great speed or he's not going to dazzle you with his yards per carry, but he's Mr. Everything back there. He is a converted tailback. Where have you heard that before? Converted tailback or converted fullback playing tailback at SC. Gray separated from the ball. He picks it back up. And it is apparently a completed pass and a fumble and a huge loss for Ken Grace. Excellent play there by Swanson, number five. Watch how quickly he comes up on this play. This is that play where he comes along the line, puts his head right on the ball, and knocks it out. And then scrambles to get up and still gets his foot in there for the tackle. His hand in on the foot for the tackle. Good call. It was obviously a reception. Swanson, one of the few DBs to stay healthy this year. and flags down on what may be a hit out of bounds. Costly turn of events for Utah. Well, what a pickup of the blitz. This is how you draw it on the blackboard when you're describing it. Watch out quickly. Lineman, look at that back come over. Struthered, bam, he hits him, knocks him out, gives the quarterback time. And again, as you said, he's going to go out of bounds here in a late hit. Out of bounds. That's the piling on. You can see the official reaching for that flag. Marcus Woods did it. That is a killer penalty. They were looking at third and six. Dead ball foul. Personal foul. Light hit on the defense. First down. And it turns into first down. Again. At the 31 of Utah. Again, just anxious to get there. Big man. He's going down. Don't hit him now. He's not clearly on the ground. There comes the flag in there. And that was going to be, as you said, Dave, it's going to be about third down and about seven or eight. And it turns out it's first down on the 31. But they get Johnson on a blitz. Second sack for Ken Buss, a backup linebacker who's been very effective and active here in the second half. And that's the way you time a blitz. You saw Buss just come flying through there right on the snap to split the line. Got his hand on the quarterback and pulled him down. 
Again, watch how quickly he gets in there. Perfect timing. Bam, he's into the secondary now. Grab on something. Hold on. He just hangs on to a foot. Brings him down. Boy, hasn't Morton been quiet in the second half. Where has he been? There, there he is. <laughs> second catch of the second half for Morton, who was uncomfortable in the first half. With two scores, Swanson knocks him out. An out pattern. This is what this is what receivers love. They run that out pattern. They drive that defensive back flat. They just turn out quick, and the passer can throw that ball, and he throws it on the field side, so it's not going to be intercepted. Just take that seven, eight yard gain, turn out, get the perfect play. Well, if you're a Trojan fan, this will make you feel a little bit better. In games in which he has caught a touchdown pass in his career, they're unbeaten. 8-0-2. Tripped up. Johnson. Six yards shy of the first down. Swainy made the play again. Boy, this is a head up, heads up play by Swainy because Johnson was going to run through for big yardage. Again, good pick up there in the blitz. Now look at the hole right there. He was going to run through for big yardage. Swainy got up off the ground, got a foot, and, and tackled him. Fourth down, 28-29 yard line. They're going for it. They, they might as well. This is this is a situation where it's a long field goal. Now maybe they might talk about it first. Look at John Robinson over there. Uh, maybe we might need to talk about it. First time out for Southern Cal. 7.43 to go. They lead by 15. a copyrighted presentation of the Raycom uh, Incorporated and is intended solely for the private use of our audience at a rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of this program without the express prior written consent of Raycom Incorporated is prohibited. Fourth down and seven, USC has talked it over using the first of their three timeouts. Line to gain is the Utah 21. They send Grace and Morton wide left. Johnson, though, wants to check he's again. Call timeout again. And he's going to call their <laughs> second timeout. How can that happen? <laughs> well, <laughs> that's an interesting call. You think he got it from the sideline. He went over and talked to the coach, got the play, but they were never able to call it. He walked all the way out there, got his huddle together, and they never seemed to huddle. Now, you got it straight this time, Rob? Yeah, I got it this time, coach. <laughs> Well, you think about plays that have really been good for him on this situation. It's fourth down, about seven, eight yards to go. They've got Struther coming out of the backfield, who's been very, very successful picking up that little swing pass. You got Morton, who was unstoppable in the first half. They just couldn't cover him. Then you've got those two big tight ends that can come off the ball, and they can dump it to him, and they're going to fall for the first down. So he's got several weapons. If he doesn't try to draw him off sides with maybe a long count, too, to pick up a free four or five yards. As we said, Grayson Morton left, and Williams is right. Struther is the setback. All day to look over the middle. Broken up, intended for McWilliams by Mark Swanson. Boy, McWilliams had position on him. Swanson actually reached around in front of him, kept his hands off him, and knocked that ball away. Watch coming from the right of your screen. You're going to see McWilliams coming to your pattern, and Swanson's going to be trailing him. There he is in the back. Watch him just reach around. Don't put that hand on him. Reach around in front, get that hand, and knock the ball down. That's the type of play that they were not even close to making in the first half. But have they ever done a 180 in the second half? Half the fourth quarter still to go. They need two scores and a two-point conversion somewhere in there. Oh, a man open deep, but McCoy settles short the gain of about three or four. He had his tight end pause completely by himself over the middle. And instead settling for the uh, short pickup by Anderson, Jeff Kopp right there for USC. You know they're going to run back in the huddle and, and the coaches are going to say, goodness gracious, you didn't see so-and-so look for him again. Don't be surprised if he doesn't come back with the same type of pattern. See if they can get the same situation, the same defense. I took my eyes off it. I didn't even 
see it. Look at John Robinson. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Look at John. He's trying to stop him. He's saying Phillips was trying to slow up when he made whatever contact he made. Well, it was so late that I actually took my eyes off of it. Listen, let's see how persuasive Robinson can be. Well, watch the play. It's going to be on the right of your screen. And watch Phillips. See if this is rough contact after he runs out of bounds right here. Okay, now, there's the hit now. That's not much. No, that sure isn't. Maybe something happened even later than that, but I sure didn't see it. Well, again, let's look at it again. All he does is just kind of push his hands up on him. Well, it looked a little more severe from that angle, but uh, it didn't even knock Glasgow off his feet. The game was 29 before the mark-off, and they're now at the 24 of the Trojans. Pick up the blitz. McGinnis staring down. Short catch, Anderson. But he may actually lose one here on the stop by Brian Williams. Well, all day long, there's been pressure. McGinnis in the middle. Again, quarterback sets up now. you got to get out of the pocket because you've got that big number 55 stroking down on you. He's running as fast as a quarterback. Teammates complained about terrible. having to go up against You guys him. know that. You know that, right? <laughs> that that whole thing was really bad. <laughs> he's, still, he's still working those officials. They know it now, I guess. Best protection of the day. Caught by Rowley. Where has he been? He has been taken out of their attack. And he's about two yards short of the first. Well, it's triple left formation. Rowley really has not been a factor. He's the middle man in that trips. And he's going to run down and just do a little curl pattern right there. Find the seam. He's open. He drove his defensive back deep. Fortunately for him, he didn't catch it up. If he had been able to catch it up, he might have picked up even more yards. Up, and I'm not oh. sure if they give him first down yardage here. If no. he had fallen down where he made the catch, he had the first down. Yeah, you have to know what that first down marker is. And what Lutz did is he had the first down. All he had to do was turn up, and he didn't. He turned back. Watch as he comes from your left side of your screen. He's going to catch the ball. Now, right here, turn up. No, he gets ground and actually goes backwards. Again, maybe we can look at it again. But watch the way he gets right there. See, he goes back beyond the line. Down and one. Now's the time to use that cadence again, see if you can maybe draw them off sides. Oh, run outside, run outside. Over the middle, it is caught at the one. should have run outside with the ball. I thought he had a chance to run for the shore first down. Right here. Get outside. But watch the catch that Lusk makes. Dives in there. Good concentration. He doesn't catch that thing. Three inches off the ground. This is ground level. Watch the catch. Get those hands underneath it. Look how low the ball is. And boy, did McCoy like this one. Look at him. Give us a touchdown. Now they're not going to go wide. Now you blow it right up the middle. They do go wide, but they get into the end zone, and it's Keith Williams. Dave, now you go for two so that you've got a chance to win with the next touchdown. Toss outside. This is look for the seam. Put the head down and find the blue. On his only carry tonight, Keith Williams, who has had to play the secondary in the last two games because of all the injuries there. Look at the formation here. One, two, three, six guys on the left side over there. Have you ever seen this? Four blockers. McCoy looks right, and they've got it. Oh, my, Anderson. Well, the six to the left were the decoys. It's a surprise formation. What you do is you try to get everybody to play over there. Then your lineman drop back in case you got to throw a screen. He doesn't need the screen. He just finds him in the flat for the 
inferior foam shave when you could have the best? Why choose ordinary lubrication when you could have the richest? Why settle for average protection against razor irritation when there's something more advanced than foam? Edge Gel. Ultimate closeness. Ultimate comfort. That's the edge. And now there's new soothing edge aftershave for sensitive, dry, and normal skin. You know your NyQuil works. What'd you do? You tried the latest thing, so you coughed all night. Got no rest. Ended up a zombie. And your proposal to the world's most demanding boss? Postponed until tomorrow. Which means you can take NyQuil tonight. You're stupid, Dave, but lucky. Vicks NyQuil, the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head fever so you can rest medicine. Also new NyQuil hot therapy. 1847. An invention from Siemens makes it possible for written words to be electrically transmitted over vast distances. That was then. This is now. Today, the ingenuity of Siemens people is breaking new ground in communications and in medicine, in transportation, in energy, and automation. At 60 manufacturing sites in America, Siemens' inventiveness continues to open doors to the future. Siemens. Precision thinking. because of the two-pointer. Boy, is this straight out of the wacky whack. <laughs> it certainly is. You can see the people all to the right. The linemen in the back, they had a set screen over to the right side of your screen. But when, when McCoy saw Anderson come out of the backfield, he saw him just one-on-one, -on -one, threw a perfect strike to him to pick up the two-point conversion. Now I think you drill it deep. I think you try to kick deep, use your timeouts, hold Southern Cal three and out, and evidently they agree. So does Ron McBride. scoring drive goes 72 yards after they had held USC on a fourth down. Williams from one yard out at that. Have you have you watched football for 83 years? Have you ever seen that formation at that play? Yes, I have. I, I have seen formations like that. But it's a surprise formation. What you hope is that the linemen don't go out, the backs don't play, but you got a lot of different weapons on it. But it was a gutsy call in that situation. Well, forget about running out the clock. Walters driven out of bounds by Crawford. That takes up all of four seconds. Well, and you don't you don't need a timeout. Now watch Luther Ellis. He's number 83. Watch how quick. Get in here, get a good rush there. It's a dumb pass now. Run straight down the line. Meet him at the intersection. Drive him out of bounds. Stop the clock. Four seconds. Lost two yards. Second and 12. up about six and bring up third and about five needed the tackle by Ken Buss to give him progress to the 33 defensive coordinator Fred Whittingham whatever he said at halftime oh, took. it worked because they have been an entirely different team in the second half they have played they've just played relaxed they've just about shut off the great Johnny Morton they have really played well Johnny Morton, first down to the 45. Oh, he was wide open on the play. Johnny Morton coming across the middle. Big target in there. There he is, number 80. Come outside, find the seam, right inside, bounce off, get open. You know he's not going to drop it. You see how he kind of squunched down? He didn't want to go back beyond that first down yardage. His 10th catch, how could they let him get that wide open? Well, they just didn't jam him on the line. Well, Woods did. He made some initial contact, but then it looked as if he thought he was passing him along to someone yep. who wasn't there to pick him up. Well, that's their go-to guy. 147 yards on those 10 catches and two scores. On the delay, Walters outside and knocked out at the 35. Sean Walters.
Walters, the red shirt freshman for 20 yards and the clock now at 224 to go. And what happens on this, what happens on this is that they catch him in a stunt. Watch the lineman twist it around and now he just bursts outside. That's what it's like to play cornerback in major college football. You see those loads coming at you. 225 pounds were at that time. Just a freshman. Strother this time, and he's got fairly good yardage to the 32. Four yards on first down. Plus has been on on about every other tackle this had for Utah, which does not burn a timeout yet. McBride has all three. But he lets it go down to 206 and counting here. Well, you start thinking field goal in this situation. But Southern Cal has not had a good year kicking field goals. Well, how late does he let it get before he calls one? Well, that's a good question. I think you have to be well under two minutes before you burn the first one. I get down around that 145 mark. They'll call one out right now. They stop. <laughs> the veteran he dives he is a yard shy of the first down with 135 to go there is the first of the three Utah timeouts with the ball in the hands of the senior Utah has to stop him here Tom O'Keefe with a stop here will be in position to finish off this comeback but the Trojans need just one on third down and they call on Walters who will be very close at the 26 yard line well he had to make the 26 yard line it all depends where the ball is going to be it's going to really be close he almost knew that they were going to run Baselli's side He's number 71. Drive him off. Look at that block. Ugh, gosh. That extra surge is what may have given him by inches a first down because he had initial contact that had stopped in the yard shot. He was there. Vaselli was there. What, 25th first team All American line? That's incredible. <laughs> by literally a nose. Offensive lineman just since the McKay heyday, 1964. I remember some of them, of course, uh, played against them. Ron Yeri. There are some great ones. They had the father son duo, uh, right guard. Oh, Buddy. Yeah, Brad, Brad Buddy. Buddy and uh, Ed Buddy. Ed Buddy. Well, now uh, with the clock rolling, you would think that the Trojans get very conservative. have to think about burning timeout number two, which they do with 101 remaining. Walters carried it down for a pickup of four. We return following these messages from your local station on the Raycom Network. On the one hand, we gave it a wider stance for better handling, a computer model suspension, and specially designed 16-inch tires. So, a pair of these could come in handy. On the other hand, we thoughtfully designed each knob, button, and switch to be easily operated while you're wearing a pair of these. New Dodge Ram. The rules have changed. See your Utah Dodge dealer. I grew up in Ogden, not very far from the R.C. Woolley store in Syracuse. I remember shopping there with my parents, but never on Sunday. When I moved back to Utah, R.C. Woolley was one of the first places I shopped. The stores changed a lot. But I still found famous name brands, exceptional service, a giant selection, and still Utah's lowest prices. I guess some things never change. It's nice being home. Never before has a dealer had the guts to do what Hinkley Dodge is doing to introduce its new Dodge Ram truck.
we bought comparably equipped Chevy and Ford trucks that we're going to let you test drive when you drive the new Dodge Ram. Decide for yourself. One test drive is worth a thousand words. Three will absolutely convince you. The ultimate test drive of the ultimate truck at Hinkley Dodge. Stadium a minute to go in the 10th annual Freedom Bowl. Dave Barnett, Dave Rowe, final moments. One more timeout left for Utah. And the Trojans look at second and six. So worst case scenario for USC. They don't get the first down here. Last timeout would be called by Utah with somewhere around 50 seconds to go. And the Trojans still almost can't lose it. But no game, maybe a loss for Walters. And now should come that last timeout. With 56 seconds, it'll be third down and seven, but Utah cannot stop the clock again. Now you start looking at what what kind of times they're going to need for plays. But the Utes still have hope when we come back to the big game. Was I surprised when my dentist told me I had a tartar problem? Doctor, I said, I brush with baking soda and peroxide. He said, those aren't tartar fighting ingredients, so your teeth aren't as clean as they could be. Use tartar control crest. But doctor, I said, shouldn't I use baking soda and peroxide for my gums? Pete, he said, they're not proven to do anything special for your gums either. So I used crest, and my tartar problem, <laughs> no problem. Tartar control crest, it's proven to fight tartar buildup. It's the dentist's choice. No more surprises for me. What do you smell? I can't smell anything. My nose is clogged. Yeah. For fast relief, try Dristan 12-hour nasal spray. Now smell. It's an orange. Dristan nasal spray just works incredibly fast. Dristan, the face of relief today. My dandruff shampoo is good. Better try something else. Mine really works. You'd better try something else, like Selsun Blue. Doctors recommend it more than all leading brands. Selsun Blue, doctor recommended number one. The 1993 Freedom Bowl has been brought to you by Shasta Beverages, wishing you and your family a safe and flavorful new year. And by Edge Shave Gel, ultimate closeness, ultimate comfort. That's the Edge. Third and seven for USC, Utah out of timeouts. Well, they could run this play, then run the last play on the last second, and maybe run the clock totally out. Walters again to the middle, to the 21, with 50 seconds. Okay. And it'll be fourth in about five, maybe four. Watch when they watch when they set the clock here. There. Right now there. 25, so there should be... 13 seconds. About 13, 14 seconds left. Almost looked as if John Robinson said, let the clock run out, take the penalty. Might as well. And if you think, well, why not put it away for good with a field goal? Well, they've had a PAT block. Oh, That's why. Absolutely. Or USC will burn a timeout. That's uh, what happens with 15 seconds, so they don't give up the five-yard mark off, and now they're out of timeout. Now, that's surprising to call timeout with 15 seconds. Did they have to? Was the clock down to one? Ha, it was down to one. That's right. Well, now, worst case for <laughs> USC. They don't get the first down. It doesn't take 15 seconds, and Utah will have one or two more cracks, but uh, they'll have around 80 yards to go. Well, you start thinking about what they can do in this situation. Do you just run the ball wide? Hope that, no, just tell them, don't fumble the ball. Do you try, you don't try a field goal in this situation. Because the fear of it being blocked and picked up on the dead run, those type of things. Rob Johnson put him in this position with an almost perfect first half. Many connections with Johnny Morton most prolific pass catch duo in uh, USC history. And Johnson is back for one more year. Get ready for the Heisman yeah. hype because it's coming about oh, him. Oh, absolutely. For the year he's had this year, another year of training. Now you wonder how high can he throw the ball? Now think about that. 
takes the ball, drops back with about maybe three, four seconds on the clock. He uh, burns off and then lofts one high until it comes down. I don't think he has that kind of I, um, <laughs> I don't think so. I think they're going to be just content just to maybe run to the sideline and maybe give it to him. Walters will lose one with eight seconds to go when Utah takes over 78 yards away. Now you're going to see one of the unique defenses in the college ranks. You're going to see the 110. One guy up in the line and 10 guys deep to try to protect for this. They're going to be 25, 30 yards off the ball. Well, you're also going to see the five wideouts for Utah. <laughs> Three on the left side, the other two on the near side. Well, they're 40 yards back. Hail Mary. Intercepted. As time runs out by John Herpin. And a terrific comeback falls just shy for the Utah Utes in their fourth bowl appearance ever. John Robinson in his return to USC, a winner in the 1993 Freedom Bowl. Our final score again, Southern Cal 28, Utah 21. The executive producer of Raycom Sports is Peter Rohl. Senior coordinating producer, Johnny Tyus. Tonight's telecast produced by Jim Zrake and directed by Doug Freeman. Our technical director, Ken Kirschbaum. And our associate producer, Dennis Kirkpatrick. Thanks to our spotter, Scott Jones. Our statistician, Dennis.